Um, so I'm David Payne. I'm the digital editor at the BMJ. I've been there for about seven years now, and I'm not medical. Um, I also wasn't here this morning, um, so apologies for that. But I, I don't know if you talked about print at all no. this morning. Right, OK. Well, I'll start with um, just a sort of uh, something around impact. Um, I think the newest impactful thing we've done on the journal so far this year is to relaunch our print issue, which went live about four weeks ago. Um, it's kind of radical, really, for a scholarly publication. It's, um, it's a lot busier than it used to be. It's a lot, the articles are a lot shorter. Um, it was really informed by getting sort of our core readership of doctors into a room in our sort of product development collab environment at BMJ and producing a couple of dummies and really testing out the hypothesis that um, you know, lots of doctors are too busy to read you know, a weekly journal of the length and the and the, um, the depth that the, the, the old BMJ was. Um, it used to sit there. We got a lot of anecdotes that you know, a lot of doctors were seeing it sitting there in a cellophane wrapper sort of reproaching them. And it was always going to be something that they, you know, they wanted to read at some point. Um, but happily, um, it's going down very, very well. Um, if they, for whatever reason, don't like this, and you know, there are, we'll be honest, I mean, if you look at a research article, um, it's now a third of a page. So it's you know, a really, really kind of pared down abstract. And if there's an accompanying editorial, that takes up more space on the, um, on the actual research page than the, the actual paper does. So, but if, if that is just a little bit too far down the, um, the kind of um, light reading route, we've also launched this monthly academic scholarly journal, which originally goes out to institutions, our institutional customers that are based outside the UK. And this is sort of very light on journalism, personal views, news, but it does include the full text of research papers and education articles and some features and analysis. So um, we just started offering this to UK readers as well who are predominantly BMA members, personal subscribers. So it's not just going to overseas institutions. Um, um, well, it's early days, yeah. I mean, I think um, a, f a few dozen BMA members have availed themselves of it. Um, um, so, I mean, they might want to read it more now. Some of them are going to be going on strike. You know, it's a bit more, they'll have a bit more time to actually read through things. <laughs> Sorry, I will I'll go. <laughs> Moving swiftly on. Um, so, I mean, our kind of buzzword at the moment is that we are more than a medical journal. Um, so, as I said, we've got the weekly print magazine and Android and um, iPad apps, academic journal. We're very conscious that we've got um, UK and international competitors. So, we think about impact in terms of how can we make sure that we're more read in the UK, where our competitor journals are, are magazines that are pitched at GPs, and obviously overseas, where we've got the, um, the Lancet, the New England Journal, Annals of Internal Medicine, and and, and, and publications like that. Um, we're a hybrid journal. We publish news features and fast turnaround comment, which probably explains why we have a lower impact factor than other titles. Um, we have an investigations editor. We do lots of media partnerships with national newspapers and um, the BBC and ITV Panorama um, on kind of in-depth investigations, looking at lots of sort of media medical topics. Obviously, we've got the scholarly stuff. Um, we're very hot on audio, video, and we have a full-time info infographicist. So I think uh, one of the earlier speakers alluded to how to bring all the data to life. And uh, Will, who sits in my team, does that very, very regularly with scholarly articles and actually either interactive or flat graphics for print. Um, another way we've tried to build influence and impact is by developing an award scheme in the UK and South Asia, um, which is an annual thing. And just on the patient front, as well as what Richard said, um, we have a very active patient partnership strategy. And at the kind of basic level, that includes getting the patient voice in the journal um, as a peer reviewer, um, as a patient commentary. We just launched a new article series called What Your Patient is Thinking, where we get, pa where we get patients to talk about you know, everything from car parks to, you know, there's no point telling me to lose weight. So just really trying to take the sort of the, the medical community on in terms of some of their communication. Um, we actively encourage media partnerships. We did a conference on investigative journalism in New York last week where we took our investigations team over there and partnered with some sort of veteran journalists such as Harold Evans um, to try and promote the fact that we are, as I say, more than a medical journal. I'm just going to mention Christmas very briefly because it's coming up, but our Christmas issue has been going for very many years now. Um, it's kind of legendary in our kind of readership. It's, a, it's an opportunity for doctors to submit peer-viewed research on some of the meteor topics such as, you know, which chocolates go first on a hospital ward, um, what happens to the teaspoons. So it's just a, a very, very kind of um, looked forward to, I would say, um, uh, print issue. Obviously, it all goes online as well, um, but it's just a way of kind of ending the year on a lighter note. But... Um, I'm kind of the sad thing is a lot of our Christmas papers are still in our most read list sort of um, 11 months on. Um, 
So I've talked about impact factor. There it is. Obviously, it's not as high as some of our competitors. We try not to fixate too much on that, and we try and, as I've said, um, make sure our voice is heard in other ways. So we run campaigns. Um, we have, we're establishing a set of key performance indicators which we're going to look at year on year to make sure that we are you know, on the right track, um, making sure that we're, we're out there and being listened to and being valued and seen as authoritative and influential. We take media mentions very, very seriously, as I'm sure everybody does, so um, press releasing and getting colleagues in front of um, um, parliamentary committees is very important to us. Uh, we think we, we hope we pioneered post-publication peer review and have done some stuff there um, this year and we'll do some stuff next year around that and obviously social media is important to us as everybody is. Um, I just want to focus on one specific campaign. We were actually online for 20 years this year. We launched in May 1995 with a very sort of brochureware site and became full text very shortly after that. And as a digital editor, I really wanted to mark that. I was conscious that you know we were an early adopter in the digital space. So we thought of lots of things, some of, some of which we did, including a kind of BBC Radio 4 reunion-style podcast where we got the original team together to talk about what their aspirations were around um, going online. But more importantly, we asked sort of 20 friends of the journal, um, so these are readers internationally and in the UK, you know, key opinion leaders, sort of the great and good from medicine, um, a, a real cross-section there, to nominate which paper they thought had had the most impact in the last 20 years. Um, I took those 20 papers and I looked at the most highly cited ones and we ran a reader poll and it was just a way of kind of getting people to talk about papers that had really resonated with them. So I, I published an accompanying feature where I explained, you know, why some of our friends and, and readers had nominated the paper they had and um, it generated obviously some social media activity and some post-publication comments as well about, you know, other articles, the ones that kind of got away, the ones that readers thought were also very important. They were the top six, actually. The Scandal of Poor Medical Research um, was, I think, a non-research paper. It would have been um, that talked about um, medical research and then as a research paper underneath. So, I mean, a nice cross-section there of different things um, that we felt had resonated or that our readers felt had resonated over the last 20 years. Um, I talked about KPIs. Uh, so one of my jobs is to run a, an annual online user survey. Um, and the great things about, obviously, digital surveys is you can kind of build volume very, very quickly. So we run that for a week every year. Um, and we stop when we get to about 1,000 responses, which our marketing colleagues tell is representative, especially if you've included, you know, kind of um, important territories for us. Um, around the world and we started to include some stock questions now that we want to keep asking year on year so that we can really demonstrate you know to readers and to partners um, that we are having impact so um, one of the watchwords of the BMJ is helping doctors make better decisions so we ask them you know have we ever have we influenced you to change your practice have we helped you make better decisions are we publishing clinically relevant content content and obviously those KPIs sit alongside article-based metrics and alt metrics and the number of responses that an article attracts and how often it's shared and obviously social media mentions as well. So we want to build up over time a snapshot which will hopefully demonstrate you know, that we are increasing our influence uh, both in the UK and overseas. Can we find these evidence the feedback? Um, yes, I, I wrote an editorial about it, Anthony, so I can, I can, include, I can share the link with you. Yes. Yes, um, definitely. I mean, obviously, it's in included in that is um, is uh, some of the things they want from the website. But you know, that, so the, it, I include other questions there as well. Um, but I can maybe tease out and, and share with you some of the stuff there. I did want to include it as a yeah, yeah. I, I was going to include it as a slide, but it wasn't the most pretty thing. So I just thought I'd take the um, okay. Um, <laughs> talking about media mentions, um, since we went fully online first in two thousand and eight, we broke the kind of Friday BMJ day culture uh, in sort of medical journalism. So, you know, if you talk to national newspaper journalists, they'd always know that the, B the Friday was a good day to, to publish a BMJ story. Um, so we, you know, we took our um, heart in our mouths a few years ago and just that we'll do little and often with press releases. So we do that now and obviously tie into the online paper, um, most of which ultimately appear in print, but not always if it's a, an article that's not particularly relevant to our predominantly UK print readership. We won't include it in print. So obviously the website is the canonical version. So, I mean, just some figures there. We, we did 133 last year, so more than two a week. Um, or, you know, usually more than one article highlighted in there. 
And we encourage authors to issue their own now. So my team's job has just got a lot more complicated because we encourage authors to do their own thing if we don't feel that it's a press release that we can issue. Um, so we publish at all hours of the day and night, and depending on where the author is based, um, and making sure that obviously it gets a sort of prominent slot in the relevant territory. Um, another indication of, our, of impact is um, mentions in UK Parliament, um, uh, media mentions in the US, I think we topped the Lancet in Q2 last year, which we're very proud about. Uh, and back to the Christmas PR again. Um, you know, we start press releasing Christmas papers from mid-December. And um, last year they generated a, you know, a, a high number of web sessions for us because, you know, they do get talked about an awful lot. Um, the grab from the Times there, um, the lead story last Wednesday was uh, an investigation that we did with the Times, uh, one of my colleagues, um, about the new CCG framework and um, you know, some of the contracts that have been um, awarded there. So, you know, it was great to get that kind of prominence. I mean, the thing about media partnerships is obviously because we partnered with the Times, other newspapers weren't inclined to kind of look, touch it. So, I mean, I think some broadcasters did. But, um, so, I mean, there are, there are kind of pros and cons. But, um, you know, we often see other media pick up as well. Um, so very shortly after we went online in 1995, we launched um, article-based commenting, which I know is very, very standard now. Um, but it's, I, I'm, I'm just proud of the fact that we've got 105,000 um, on the website now um, to more than 70,000 articles. And we really do think of them as post-publication peer review. So, you know, they really, it is an opportunity to kind of challenge authors to, you know, suggest areas for further research, um, to try and engage the author to come back, which we, we certainly do. Um, we've introduced the like button on responses. Um, we also had an unlike for a while, but we thought it was a little bit, um, which I don't know, we, uh, there, was a, there was a sort of unease about it. So we got rid of it, and of course we're immediately challenged why we got rid of it once we'd done it. But we just thought it was a little bit um, discourteous to... One, one <laughs> yeah, and, um, and then we, we also went live with our peer review um, article history. Um, you can see the screen grab behind me uh, last year. We're extending that to other articles in 2015, some other scholarly content. Um, just going to conclude on social media. You know, we can't ignore it. We are shamelessly competitive about social media, so we're still lagging behind The Lancet and The New England Journal, but we're above Pulse and GP. Um, we've, got, we've really grown our Facebook followership, our following, and um, infographics, actually. My, my colleague, Will, that does our infographics, is really great at promoting them on Facebook, and the one he did for acute coronary syndrome the other week reached 24,000 people, which we are very proud about. So thank you very much.